there has been no long-term research uh, on the concept or consequences of what this genetic modification does, not just to us, but to the environment. And right now, from all the research that's showing up, it says this has a very negative and profound effect on destroying the environment in which we live. So therefore, I find it senseless that the government would support and condone genetically modified foods without even having the basic research to understand the liabilities involved in creating these monster organisms and putting them into our world. The conversation in Europe and in countries in South America and in Asia is much more sophisticated in terms of its understanding of science, the importance of independent peer-reviewed science that isn't contaminated or corrupted by corporate influence. Here in the United States, you know, the birthplace, the bedrock of the free market system and democracy, we are having our rights corrupted by corporate influence. Uh, the major uh, impact that uh, Monsanto has, their ability to get their products approved with minimal uh, scientific oversight and minimal review of these products for human health, testing is really an abomination. The entire scientific foundation underneath genetically modified organisms is false because organisms are not genetically determined. And when we understand that, we recognize that the only way to create crops that will benefit humanity is to understand nature herself and learn to live in harmony with it. And this is a completely different approach than humans have had for the last couple hundred years, where we always thought, oh, humans' job was to control and dominate nature. In that process, we are now leading the world into the sixth mass extinction of life on this planet. Five times in the history of this planet, life essentially got wiped out and started all over again. The five previous mass extinctions are attributed to things like comets or asteroids hitting the Earth and destroying the environment. We are now deep into the sixth mass extinction of life on this planet. We are losing species of organisms faster than even in the previous five mass extinctions. But the source of the problem is much closer to home than a comet or an asteroid. Science has recognized that it's human behavior that is undermining the web of life. Rather than trying to control nature, our mission is actually how to learn to live in harmony with nature. For 10,000 years, humans grew crops without chemicals. You know, it's time that we get mandatory labeling in California, which will spread across the country. It's time we cut down the biotech bullies to size. And then now, let's have that discussion again about chemical agriculture versus organic or traditional agriculture. The overwhelming majority of the public want us to produce food and to raise animals in the natural, healthy, humane way. Uh, in a way that doesn't destroy the environment, public health, and the climate. Uh, and we're going to get to that point, but it's going to require, uh, as I often put it, the food fight of our lives. The FDA, which treats the American people as slaves, knows that if people knew the truth about how healing their foods can be and how dangerous the processed foods really are with all their chemical contaminants and their genetic modification. If people knew the truth, they would demand food freedom. They would demand access to healing herbal therapies and healing dietary supplements. They would demand that the FDA back down from its intimidation campaigns that have been le leveled against producers of dietary supplements and herbal remedies and raw dairy products and so on. The people would demand that if they knew, and that is why they are kept ignorant under this campaign of disinformation currently being waged by the FDA. I've been vigorous in my opposition of the strategies that these large corporations use to use their influence for their benefit. And as a result of the, my positions, uh, I'm frequently criticized by their own local networks, the skeptic networks and such. And they're also their ability, because they are so uh, politically connected, to use the federal regulatory agencies to come after me personally, to file claims against, or statements against my uh, company, and also to criticize me uh, such that it can be viewed 
in most of the traditional media to skew the information, the truth of what we're saying. They twist the tables. It looks like we're the, the bad guys when actually nothing could be further from the truth. We're just seeking to, to, to help people and understand what, what the true reality here is here and give them the tools to, to make that distinction and make, give them the right to know. In the early 2000s, uh, Montana, the biotech industry uh, vilified a scientist for his uh, linking of um, Bt corn to a decrease in monarch populations. Two years ago, uh, another research paper came out confirming that yes, Monsanto's Bt corn and their Bt cotton products were actually reducing the habitat of monarch butterflies. Monarch butterflies are the canary in the coal mine on the prairies in the Midwest. Of the major uh, impacts, the negative environmental impacts that these products are having. The large-scale cultivation of GMO crops can harm biodiversity in a number of different ways. One is that in the case where the crop is engineered to be tolerant to a herbicide, such as Roundup or glufosinate, then the application of high doses of these, of these weed killers destroys the weeds upon which other organisms normally would be consuming. So the insect population is reduced and then there isn't the insect population upon which the birds are also consuming. So there could be a knock-on effect on the biodiversity within the fields where herbicide tolerant crops are being grown. And indeed, large scale field trials sponsored by the UK government several years ago now did indeed find that in fields that were growing herbicide tolerant sugar beet and canola, that the biodiversity in this field was markedly reduced. There's a lot of information now on bee colony collapse, and, uh, and uh, it's now linked to certain of the chemicals that are sold by certain of the major companies. So there's a lot of concern now about the bees dying because now we lose a major uh, insect that, uh, that the pollinates our, our, uh, our plants. And so that also has become a big concern, but it's all related, it all goes back to the massive increase of new types of more powerful, uh, uh, chemicals, more toxic chemicals than we ever, ever had before. And that's why we have a, many of our beneficial insects are being killed by these new types of chemicals. GM carries novel health and environmental risks, which we are now beginning to measure, both in terms of environmental impact and also outcomes in feeding trials, controlled feeding trials in animals, then I feel that the use of GM in agriculture is a risk that is simply not worth taking. GM doesn't address root causes of problems in agriculture. At best, it is a symptomatic cover-up. We have thousands of different varieties of any given food crop you can mention. And by simply dipping in to this already existing reservoir of varieties, of crops, resurrecting old crop varieties which have been displaced could readily meet our food needs without having to resort to the risky procedures associated with, with GM. What is an herbicide resistant crop? It's a crop that you can spray the hell out of it with a toxic chemical and it won't die. It kills everything except that particular crop. And, and so you have the ability not only to sell the seeds to the farmer, you're gonna sell them the companion pesticide. So you get two sales for one, uh, and they're gonna to have to come back to you every year and get them. Uh, because once you start applying these poisons on this scale, uh, your farmland is so devastated that uh, to convert to organic, for, for example, is uh, economically difficult. The most comprehensive analysis of GMOs shows that they actually reduce yield. But sustainable technologies, they can increase yield by an average of 79%. GMOs are stealing the money away from these more appropriate technologies. 
We have more food per person than any time in human history. We have enough food grown to feed 11.3 billion people. What we don't have is the ability for people to access that food. And so it's not a silver bullet of increased yield that the biotech industry tries to sell us. The ISTAD report proved that organic and sustainable agriculture had the same and higher yields than conventional, chemical intensive, genetically engineered crops. These herbicides are actually having a major impact in killing the beneficial soil microorganisms in the soil, which actually not only add to the yield gains, but also the nutritional value of these plants. Cotton production has increased in this country because of acreage, not because of the BT technology. Rice and wheat production increased in India because of irrigation and acreage. Land and water account for it, not the seed and the chemicals. In fact, the seed and chemicals have created a scarcity. First, the new seeds had to be grown as monoculture, so you had less food. Today, we are importing pulses from Canada, from the United States very vital to a vegetarian diet. We're not growing pulses because our monocultures have no place for pulses. Pulses give you free protein. Pulses give you free nitrogen fixing. All of that was wiped out. All seeds, farm trees, agroforestry, the water use of this so-called Green Revolution was 10 times more compared to equivalent farming systems. As a result of the uh, loss of beneficial soil microorganisms, not only have the yields gone down, but there's been a dramatic increase in the rise of crop diseases, which are infecting corn and soybeans in the U.S. We're sacrificing, you know, our soil just because it's an easier way to farm and, and trying to convince ourselves it's, it's more economical, but it's not. You know, I'm seeing neighbors' fields who've been doing this stuff for 15 plus years, they can't get rid of a lot of weeds now. These weeds are getting resistant to the glyphosate herbicide, so farmers are upping rates. More herbicides. And then all of a sudden that's not doing it anymore, so you have to switch herbicides. So now the soil is just more and more and more full of poison. So there's going to be more sickness in that field. It's going to be more susceptible to diseases, insects. It won't make it through drought periods as long. The same crops side by side, right across from each other. The natural plants are going to make more over time and you have a soil that you continue to poison, nature's going to win. In 2006, Cornell University released a study on soil degradation that stated by the year 2050 that 30 percent of the land that's already cultivated will be unfarmable because of soil degradation. Now the thing about Roundup and glyphosate is that it stays in the soil for months or years and it continues to cause the reduction of available nutrients and the promotion of these diseases. And so people like Dr. Huber, Dr. Don Huber from Purdue University, have identified more than 40 plant diseases that are on the rise in the U.S. because of the overuse of Roundup and other glyphosate-based herbicides. Now, it pulls these nutrients out of the food supply for months or years. According to Reuters, in 2007, there was about 184 million pounds of glyphosate herbicide used in the United States. Now that's one of many, many years, hundreds of millions of pounds, which means hundreds of millions of pounds of nutrients have been tied up and taken out of the food supply. When we have a company like Monsanto that says, I don't care what nature says, I'll create the crops that I want, and we look at what happens, we see another step another process in our own demise. This is a, a very powerful enemy, a, David, a classic David versus Goliath challenge. And there's the only way we have any approach, any possibility of ever winning this thing is if we work together as a cohesive group. The whole concept of genetically modified organisms is throwing a monkey wrench in the life on this planet. And until we change that, we are heading downhill at a rapid rate of speed toward our own extinction.